Suck! 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 Why was no one else chanting? Hi, can I do four fully loaded Chris sandwiches, please? Anything else? Uh, no, I think that's gonna be it. Uh, we brought our own coffee. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much. I don't think you brought your own coffee. This is the Burger King drive thru. Well, I. Burger King like, coffee not good enough for you? I didn't know that that was gonna be an option, Josh. I don't know what your budget is. <laughs> now we must now. display the sandwiches. Do we eat them now? Yeah, yeah, give me the sandwich. Okay, okay. Holy, oh my god. This is what we refer to as Dr. Nick's window to weight gain, where if you can spread the packaging on the sandwich and you can see through it, then you know it's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good sandwich, though. That's really good. Their sausage isn't as good as McDonald's. I don't think the ham and the bacon add a ton. To me, where Burger King makes up is this little croissant bun. With a croissant, you get this hole in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah, You've made thousands of croissants in your life, right? Like, that was oh. that was all you did before coming to Mythical. Yeah, I made a lot of croissants. I also made a lot of cronuts. Do you think we could do a cronut bun? You could do this on any laminated dough. I think making some, like, baller laminated viennoiserie, is that the term? Yeah. Ain't no culinary school, baby. I went to the culinary school of hard knocks. Yeah, here's the thing. You're the meat guy. Yeah. You know? I'm the pastry guy. We got a lot of meat and pastry here. Let's get back to the kitchen. We got this. We're gonna start by making the dough. So if you wanna go ahead and take this saffron. Yes, I do. And I, I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here Whoa. for you. If you just wanna take a pinch of that, drop it in there, and then pound it up. I can't get it in there. My fingers are too stubby. I got sausage fingers. Okay, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, but go ahead. So now we're just trying to infuse the saffron yes. into the water. That's gonna give it like a lovely yellow color, right? That you see in a lot of Persian rice. Oh yeah, it's gonna be real, real yeah. yellow. Nicole's flipping me off. Should I do like the spoon and sweet method for flour? Do it, do it. Show people how to it gives, okay. give them something useful. If you're reading a recipe online and you're measuring flour, you're supposed to do the spoon and sweep method, which is where you spoon a bunch of flour and then, and then you just sweep. I do what's called the cram and mash, where I take the measuring cup and I cram it in there and then I mash the sides See, of the bag in. Okay, that's why every single recipe that I ever do doesn't <laughs> work for you because every time I measure the recipe, I do this and I measure the flour precisely and then Josh packs a bunch of extra flour in, and then he's like, why are these doughs so dry? I need more water. I gotta go to the sink to get water. Trevor, why are these measurements wrong? I think I am in the right on this. So I'm gonna get a couple tablespoons of sugar going in there. Josh, do you want something to do? Or what do you, what's going on? You get that medal for making croissants? I don't have a medal on me. Are you threatening me That was me my monologue from uh, Quentin Tarantino classic Inglorious Bastards. That was really good, Josh. Thank you. Daddy Williams goes yacht on him! So I'm just gonna get okay. some yeast going in here really quick. I like having this, I feel powerful. Please don't whack me with the I'm not gonna whack you, I'm just saying like, you know, the, the threat. I don't like it. Okay, just mixing up. Whoa, I got the thing over here. I was reaching over to the other side. Sorry, I don't know where to go. You, you, just, you came over to my kinda, side. Just kind of, you came kinda, over to my side. I don't know. Kinda, I'm gonna be here. Just, so we're gonna, so kinda we're gonna go ahead. Thank <laughs> you. Way too close. I don't like, I don't like physical touch. <laughs> we got some melted butter. We're okay. gonna get that going in there. Do you need to stream that butter in slowly? Do you wanna like gradually incorporate it? No. Oh. No, you can just throw everything in. I'm excited to have you actually do this. When are we adding the the saffron? We can add it in. Now. Should we strain it or do just? You? Do you dump want it. it? No, no, you want you want strands in the dough? Oh my, now we wait. Do you want it to be, they use the term, uh, trying to say bacon things, elastic dough? No. No. No, you don't I didn't think so. Elastic. I thought, the reason you want elasticity in your dough is so that when it bakes, that's the gluten strands that are, gotcha. that are created and that's gonna cause rise and give you really chewy texture. The rise that you get in a croissant dough is from the butter, from that mechanical leavening. As opposed so to chemical leavening. So, <laughs> Yes. You don't want it to be super elastic, super stretchy. You want it to be pretty stiff because when you bake it, you're gonna get a lot of that butter that's releasing steam and that little bit of yeast in there. It's gonna give it that really flaky texture. But then for a chrono, which I think we should do, that's just fried, right? It's not baked at all. You're taking the raw dough and you're dropping it into the fryer? Yeah, yeah, you're just I dropping like it in the fryer and it's gonna get really crispy outside but have a little chewy inside. Also, normally when you let a dough rest, you like see people put it in a bowl, grease bowl. With croissant doughs, I like to kind of press them out flat on a sheet tray. I don't have a sheet tray. I didn't bring one. No, no, don't worry about it. Now we are going to put it on a sheet tray. We'll put it in, do it in post. Meats man. Yes. Show me your meats. Here are my meats. Oh. So we got that Berkshire pork belly, we got that Berkshire pork butt, and then we have actually cubed that up because we're gonna make some sausage. I need you to take those herbs, start stripping herbs, man. Maybe you can just kind of shake it at this. I've been to some fancy pizzerias where they just shake it at your pizza. You just get a little bit of that oregano air on there. I'm using some fennel, parsley, and garlic salt right here. And so this is gonna start the curing process. So we have to make the sausage. The difference between sausages and other meats is that sausages are intensely cured with typically 
but they, <laughs> that's a lot, dude. That's working. It's raining. Can you just rain it on me? Just perfume me? Or like, like kind of sage yeah, me. Yeah, hold on, I'm pouring salt and sugar. <laughs> Stop. No, no more. No more. It's in my hair. <laughs> so we have sugar and we have all that fennel infused salt. We're getting some of that rosemary and Calabrian oregano in there. And then we're going to run this all through the grinder. I'm going to let it cure in all these herbs. And when we grind it up, all the herbs are actually going to ground up in there. I'm tossing in a little bit of black pepper. And again, we're making a crepinette sausage. The term crepinette actually comes from call fat. And call fat is a stomach lining membrane that you would typically wrap around these kind of rustic French sausage patties, but stomach lining ain't fancy. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to encase these sausage patties in butter, let it set, kind of age in the fridge for a bit, and then hopefully we'll just throw that butter into a screaming hot pan and the butter will cook through and melt over these sausage patties. So you're telling me we're gonna have a puck of sausage that's completely encased in butter. It's like the opposite of a croissant dough. Instead of the butter being inside, the butter's on the outside. Yeah, so Trevor, you meat. and I aren't so different. Like you're Gen Z, I'm a millennial, you're the doughboy, I'm the meat man. Mm -hmm. But we both love deep down encasing things in butter and encasing butter in things. And that is the real message of the holiday spirit. It's true. So we just have to let this sit for at least like half an hour until it sort of bleeds the moisture out. Uh, we got a fresh one from the fridge. I don't know, I didn't plan on this beat. Rev it up, rev it up. Try and start pushing it through. Push, you gotta mash it. Yeah, yeah, mash it, mash it, mash it. There we go, there we go. That's what we want. And we're using the combination of shoulder and belly because shoulder's too lean, belly a little bit too much fat. We're already encasing the whole dang thing. 50 bucks worth of butter. So I think it's really gonna work out. So while that's getting in there, I'm gonna toss in the macadamia nuts. A typical ingredient in crepinette might be hazelnuts. Macadamia nuts are fancier than hazelnuts. Who are you yelling at? Them! Who? The people who paid the bills! Are we live? <laughs> So we're just gonna go ahead and add some of that porcini powder in there. It's gonna give it some nice savoriness. And then can you grate some whole nutmeg in there and then we're ready to encase in butter. That's good, just smell that. Like it's got a lot of nice savoriness to it. And then you're gonna grate some of that whole nutmeg in there. And my favorite part, why'd you put the shaker top <laughs> on the nutmeg? Just put some nutmeg air on there. Anytime you put fresh nutmeg in a dish, you don't taste it anyway, so we're good on that. All right, and then we're just gonna mash this up with our hands. And then, Trevor, we get to make some sausage patties and encasing this in butter. You ready? Yeah. I can't hear you. Our Aye aye, Captain. Trevor, you got, you're just lathering yourself up yeah, with that. Moisturizing. That is a $50 log of butter. That is literally more expensive than the moisturizers at Sephora, I assume. I made that well, show. Me, I want to get in on it now. Yeah. All right, so, it's kind of nice. Oh, that's really good. Isn't it? So I'm just going to make some very large sausage patties. You're probably working with like, what, five inch cronuts? Five inches? Yeah, it sounds good. So I'm going to like overestimate a little bit, probably go like a little six inch diameter on these patties because we yeah. don't want this to be too small. Oh. Yeah, squeeze it. Oh, this is so I love that. So this is nice. someone's fetish. I don't know whose, but you're out there. And yes, I'm talking to you right now. This looks pretty good. This is a hefty sausage patty, but yeah. I, I want this to be the star of the show because the bacon and the prosciutto, those are accent meats. Yeah. The prosciutto. The prosciutto. The prosciutto. Yeah. I watched The Sopranos. The Sopranos. <laughs> As someone who loves eating cold cuts in my bathrobe in front of the fridge, I love The Sopranos. That's what the show, I couldn't care about the mob subplot of The Sopranos but I love the fact that he would eat cold cuts in his bathrobe. All right, so I got this. That's lovely, man. We can see all those nice macadamia nuts poking out of our sausage. Not a thing you commonly hear in the food world. All right, all right, one more patty, one more patty, one more patty. I better work make fast. this into a shape. Make a sculpture of me, man. A sculpture of you? Yeah, yeah. All right, let me give you some nice thick legs. I always tell people online I don't skip leg day. I do. So I got these nice thick sausages. <laughs> Whoa, that actually is a sculpture. It's butter gumby, but wide. All right, so make me like a bed that I'm gonna then put the sausage on, then we're gonna encase it around, and then we're gonna dust a bit of fiore di finocchia or fennel pollen on top. There we go, that's good. This is, uh, speaking of Calabria, this is a common Calabrian technique. It's called a burro di mano, or um, the butter of Christ. And so we're gonna go ahead <laughs> I'm just gonna fold up the sides of this butter. Now, Trevor, I need you to give me like a butter hat. Yeah, yeah, give me a nice big old butter. <laughs> I'm just trying to use my hands to, to sort of warm the butter and get it to fuse to itself. My hands are covered in raw pork. Can you dust the top with fennel pollen? But your hands are covered in butter. I got it, I got it, yeah, I got it. Give me, it. here, put, put it onto my forearm and I'll kind of shake it off. Yeah. There we go, there it is. And then now we're just gonna dust fennel pollen on top of all that butter. And then when the heat hits that butter, it's all gonna melt. The fennel pollen's actually going to toast and it's gonna infuse into that pork. The prestige. How did that work? I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna do another one of these and we actually got a couple sitting in the fridge. They've been resting there for four days. So we're gonna try and almost like age that meat inside the butter. Then we're gonna hit it in a hot cast iron pan. Then we got sausages. <laughs> Baby Ruth. <laughs> All right, Trevor, so check it out. We got our fennel pollen encrusted bird de barat yeah. crepinette sausages here. I'm just gonna flap one of these up. I got a hot cast iron pan. I don't think it's gonna overflow, right? 
Let's drop it in and see what happens. All the butter should melt and cascade over the sausage and we should get a perfectly butter poached crepinette sausage. But in the meantime, we were inspired by the idea of tamagoyaki, but then yesterday when we tried to make the actual tamagoyaki, which is a Japanese rolled omelet, we found out that you can't learn that in 20 minutes. No. So what we're going to do is we're gonna essentially make a sort of flan with the flavors of tamagoyaki. So we got this dashi concentrate, right? We're it's gonna... got all that bonito flake. Yeah. And then we have mirin, Japanese sweet cooking wine, a little pinch of sugar, duck eggs. Trevor crack four duck eggs in there, add a little bit of this stuff. Stuff. Okay. And then we're gonna add it to our tamago yaki pan. But we have this in a water bath and we're gonna cook it at a very low temperature in the oven. So it should, that's making me nervous. And so it should almost turn into this kind of flan-like consistency with that mirin and dashi in there. That looks cool, dude. I like when you do that. Do you know that Traver, Traver is the swag lord of Mythical Kitchen? <laughs> That's if you need fact. Any, if you need any proof, look at that. I am the swag lord. Yeah, just like about that much. That's good. And then just a tiny pinch of sugar. And then because the has got all the salt in there, it's got this is the concentrated, so it's got that soy. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of tea seed oil. You will recognize this from the fancy McNugget episode. We're still using it. So we're just gonna add a little bit of, that's a lot. So we're just gonna add a fair amount of that to the pan. And then as is tradition, oh god, dude, look at that. Oh my god, the butter's spurting <laughs> it's everywhere. It's a volcano. All right, so. Get this all whisked up. I'm just gonna add that. We're thinking this way we get a beautiful, nice egg square. Hopefully we got a little bit of air that's in that. That's not a square, silly. That's a rectangle. Don't you dare correct me in front of them. <laughs> We're gonna put this in the oven at 250 for about half an hour. It looks like a flan. Yeah, right? This is like, it's it's tamagoyaki flan. For our BK loaded croissant sandwich on a saffron cronut with whatever's happening there. It's good. It's gonna be, this is gonna be rad, dude. I'm stoked on this. This is gonna be the best fancy fast food yet. This is silly. <laughs> All right, Trevor, I'm gonna try and flip this sausage. Okay, I'm gonna stand over here. And run. Woo, woo, woo! All right, Trevor, we got our sausage finishing up poaching in that butter. Yay. We got the eggs in the oven. Now, all we gotta do, we're gonna finish up those croissants. But first, we're gonna get weird with some bacon. That's a lot of stuff to do. That's a lot of stuff. This is so can we, much. Can this we finish? We bit off. Can we just eat it now? I just wanna eat another croissant sandwich from Burger King. My body's jonesing ever since I had that one, dude. <laughs> we got a lot of these very soft, incredibly ripe French cheeses. We're gonna be mixing these with our American. I'm so excited. Can't you tell by my face? We gotta try them. It's for, oh gosh. Is I this, don't wanna. I thought this was illegal in the US. I don't wanna. Seriously, this is supposed to be illegal. It's like a raw cheese. You can get disease from it. All right, here, grab it. Take some. I don't wanna. <laughs> Notes of cabbage. Oh! Notes of cabbage that has been sitting behind a Kmart dumpster for mm, about oh. three weeks aged. Three weeks aged dumpster cabbage. Let's try some other ones. This one's got a tougher rind. I'm guessing you gotta cut this one off. Trevor, this is fancy fast food. You can't eat all the American cheese. That's Why just to it give it texture. Then? So I'm gonna cut the rind off this one. The fart smell is intensifying. I like this one. It's spongier. <laughs> it's got holes. It smells more cabbage. <laughs> it smells more cabbage than the first. Trevor, I think this is a good one. Try it. Notes of. This is like a, a Whole Foods dumpster cabbage. Yes, it's got more chew to it. So every time you chew, you feel that old cabbage flavor really explode in your mouth. All right. Don't make me do it. Well, smell this one. It smells like a public pool. This one actually smells very, very clean. This isn't as hefty as the other ones. I don't want to do it. Here, some of that stuck to the board. Try this. Can I have Diet Coke? No, no, no. You get Diet Coke after. Diet Coke's your treat for eating all the cheese. That's actually very mild. Oh, praise God we saved kind that one so for the last <laughs> one. So we're gonna add some milk to a pot and then I'm gonna chuck in all this American cheese. We wanna make like slices of cheese. So we're gonna take all those emulsifying agents from this American cheese. You want more? I've had enough. You Notes of America, taste of freedom. Can I do something? Oh yeah, absolutely, man. So we're also doing the bacon right here. So we got this lovely heritage pork bacon and we're gonna put that into a vacuum seal with a little bit of these truffles and a shot of Lafroig Isla scotch. That way it's actually gonna break down all of this pork fat inside the bacon. So when you sear it, it's just really gonna absolutely melt. So we're gonna cook that for a couple hours. Anyway, so I'm gonna melt down all these cheeses. I'm gonna save a little nuggets of the good one for later. What are you, am I just like doing this in the thing? Yeah, yeah, we're just gonna shove that in there, vacuum seal, and then all the truffle and the campfire is gonna infuse into that bacon. That should come through as a like, huge flavor pop to go along with our butter poached porcini crepe in that sausage. Vac seal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's sucking. Suck. 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 All right, this is nice and melted. How's it doing? Is it sealed? It's sealed? No! Oh! What we're gonna do, Trevor, just, no, we're gonna- Bro, can we here, just cook the bacon up. normally? What we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it in here. Trevor, just hold the bag shut. It's gonna cook at 180 degrees, so don't get your fingers in there. Just hold it for a while. All right, and now, Daddy's gonna need that later. <laughs> just call yourself daddy? Yeah, I call myself daddy all the time. I, I give myself affirmations every morning and call myself daddy. You go, you got this daddy. And I go, yeah, papi, you got this. All right, so now 
We got all this cheese melted. There's still some lumps in Trevor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna manually smash out the lumps. And then I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna pour it all over the sheet. And then I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit. And then we're gonna let this sit in the fridge. And then we're gonna punch it out into squares. And then, mmm, it's like if you let nacho cheese just oh sit in a God. 94 Corolla on a hot day for, I don't know, six months in an abandoned train lot. Trevor, I don't know what we're doing. Do you wanna narrate this part? Yeah, I would love to. I'm just gonna chill and eat some cheese. Okay, so we're just gonna take this. We're gonna give a little flour. The other cheese inside, the cheese is more sour. I can't put into words how little I care. I'm just gonna roll it out. We, do you remember we once pitched a segment called Nicole and Trevor Take Josh to Culinary School? We decided that we shouldn't make me look stupid. <laughs> you do that fine enough on your own. That's buddy. what I said, that was my retort. Josh, it's really not that you're stupid. It's just that something like this is very delicate and you can't really palm heel strike your way through. <laughs> I think I can palm heel strike this. Can I? I, I, I? No, yeah, it doesn't really move. I love baking. I love at Care. the end of a hard day, mm. just it's filling frosted. filling my glass with quail eggs and just taking a nice sip. And you just know that everything's gonna be okay. What do we got going on? The thing about chrono dough is that it's very forgiving. And at the end of the day, we're not putting this in the oven, we're putting it in a deep fryer, which means you can basically do anything you want. I've built my whole career on hiding my flaws behind deep frying things, and so I get it. So we're just gonna kind of stretch out these corners here. You want me to, here you pull. I want, I want to be included. <laughs> so we're gonna take these corners and we're gonna fold them into the center, like so. Like so. And we're gonna pinch these corners shut. Shut. <laughs> so what all you're, uh, all you're doing here, right? You, you're, you're creating a closed loop system because then you're gonna roll it out and you want all the butter to stay in so you pinch the shut into a nice parcel. Yes. We're gonna have one layer of yeah. dough, one layer of butter, and one layer of dough, and it's gonna get really flat. Then when we fold that over, then those layers multiply, right? Multiply. Because you do the math, because it's still, you're folding them over. So now you have yeah, the math three layers, just so it's nine layers of I mean, dough, butter, dough, and butter, then, dough, butter. Can I just go do this by yeah, myself? Yeah, I think you should just go do this can by yourself. I'm really losing can interest. Just... It's not that I don't care, I really care, but it's just I got the, I got the attention, the, the depth. I'm gonna go home. So I'm just gonna cut out a large circle. You have all of those layers of butter that are like in between this, right? You're this gonna see buttered, it. It's been buttered, it's been folded, it's been rolled, it's been folded again. You're gonna be able to see it. I mean, I shouldn't promise that, you know? I've learned something here, never promise anything. So let's see if we can get. Wow, wow, you can literally see, I'm gonna gesture with my donut flippers, AKA giant cooking chopsticks. That is fantastic. You can Look see all those layers inside there. Dude, 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 dude. All right, all right, all right. You ready to fry this bad Donuts has holes, otherwise it's a Bialy. One left from the fellow that is your, That's your cronut. Oh my gosh, this is our cronut. Feels cronuts. so good. We can also fry up some holes for us for later. Cronut holes! Okay, so we're at about 3.30, is that good? Yeah. So I'm just gonna drop this in. It should right. get pretty golden I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and manage my heat, because we don't want this to like cook yeah. too much on the outside. No, yeah, because if you cook it, it'll get too crispy before the inside cooks. Wow, you can already see it expanding. Dude, this is really cool. Trevor, good job, man. Thank you. I man, wanna I... fry it. Uh, this, is for yeah, us. This, is for us. this is for us, this is for us, this is for us. We're gonna punch a hole out of the sausage, and we're gonna make little sliders. Oh. Should've done that. Oh, be nice. I think this might be ready to flip. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh. <gasps> Oh. oh my gosh, look at that. That's so golden brown. I'm proud of us. I'm proud of us too, man. This has been a long, arduous journey. It's true. And this Never is a did. metaphor for all of you out there who want to succeed at something completely useless. You can, and you will do it. But again, have no use. Do that meaningless task. Society. All right, so this, oh my gourd. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, yeah, going yeah. to be unbelievable. So we're just gonna let this rest. We're yeah. gonna let that oil drain off of it. Woo. We crush it. Now all we gotta do, cut this in half, assemble our sandwich. We can eat, man. Finally. There's so much grease on my hands. That's okay, there's Sorry. on mine too. We don't care anymore, we're, we're past that. <laughs> All that for this, it looks so much less than when we started. We have put so much into this. So we have this incredible looking saffron cronut right here, and then mm -hmm. this is the egg. So we just took Ooh. it out of the pan and we sliced it, dude. Check this out. It's literally like an egg dashi and mirin flan. It's super dense, almost has the texture of like halloumi or a paneer or something. It's gonna be so incredibly flavorful. Mm. We got our little crepinette sausage. It's been basted in butter. It's got all that fennel pollen on it. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. fancy cheese that is still smelling. Ugh. It's so loose that it's barely holding together. We got all this prosciutto di parma mm. and then that bacon that we've sous vide with the truffle just crisped up in a pan. This is gonna be the best thing we've ever eaten. I, I can tell from all this already. Slice that open, we're gonna start layering. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, get that in half. Oh, oh yes, sir. Oh, the sounds. Golly. Wow. All right, so. It's so crispy on the outside, but spongy in the middle. Gonna get all that dashi tamagoyaki on there. Oh. All right, now we're gonna take, oh, smell that. 
Oh, oh, so herbaceous and lovely. That smells really good. I'm getting more and more right excited there. And about then I'm going to, hold on, you gotta, just got to get under the okay. cheese. Okay. Nestle that cheese. Yeah, yeah, Right yeah, on top. Yeah. And then ham, Trevor, ham. Ham. All this prosciutto, the Tony Soprano special, huh? Mmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in on it. Get in on it. Get in on it. You literally see the fennel pollen. Where, Burger King, how much fennel pollen you see on the original Burger King one, huh? No, none, none I fennel don't pollen. See the Burger King one. Yeah, I thought it was next to you. I'm, I've been like hallucinating. That cheese, man, I think I got a brain worm now. All right. Bacon. Let's get that bacon. Okay. Kind of like laying across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah big yeah, old yeah, strips. Yeah, yeah. Big old strips. All right, crown it. Oh, son of a biscuit. Whoa. That's what I'm talking about. Whoa, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. Hold on. Hold on. Look at this stupid little idiot. This is a little bit different. Ours is girthier, certainly, but like, honestly, I mean, it, it kind of has the same look a little bit. Each layer in here is infused with so much freaking fanciness, but not just fanciness. Like, there's a ton of different flavors in there that I think are actually going to work well together. I can't wait to try this, man. I cried tears over this. We gotta cut these in half and try them. First, we're gonna try the OG one. I know we just had it this morning, but we gotta. I'm so excited. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Still a great sandwich. Yeah. I think this is gonna taste a little different. Let's cut this in half. Okay. Yeah, right through the crust of the bacon. Okay, let's see. It. <gasps> that trap. Wow. Oh my God. Let's just press our fronts together. Kiss. Okay. We Wait, gotta go no, no, from the no, 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 side, go. right? Yeah, I'm going right this bite. I got isolated. I got bacon. Yeah, I got Holy everything here. Holy okay, okay. F and S. Okay. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my what? god. This is legitimately one of the best foods I've ever tasted in my life. Oh my god. Come oh on. You taste the truffle. You taste the dashi. You get that smell of liquor. You mm. taste the fennel pollen. Every single freaking flavor that we put in here is washing across your palate, but it still tastes like a freaking bee cake for sandwich. What's the damage? How much does this bad boy cost us? $274.38, but who cares? You cannot not afford to freaking make this. I it's just tasted a macadamia penny. nut. It's worth every penny. And it to be worked. Honest. This is unbelievable. I, I can't put this down. I gotta stop. I gotta, I gotta, oh. No, you gotta do the outro. You gotta do the outro, Josh. No! You do it. You know it. Thank you for stopping by. We got new videos out every week. And make sure to check out a Hot Dog is a Sandwich every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag Dreams Become Food. We'll see you next time. That was pretty good, man. That was almost as good as a sandwich. Rock it with a spork in your pocket. Get the spork tea now at mythical.com.